Nana Akufado is not right when he says there can't be only one founder. Yes. I will come and Maltinga in Boga is for all of you. Before, before I address the main issues, I just want to say something. You see, apart from destroying our economy, apart from plunging Ghana into crisis, one of the things this government wants to do is to rewrite our history. And we shall not allow them to rewrite our history. Because the president said he does not accept that one person can be the founder of a nation. Yes, founding a nation, it takes many people. But there's always that critical one person who sacrifice and effort is what finally leads to the attainment of the objective that everybody is working for. And so if you ask South Africans, who is the founder of modern day South Africa? They'll tell you Mandela. But it was not Mandela alone. There was Oliver Tambo, there was Govan Mbeki, and so many of them who fought the armed struggle to achieve independence for uh, South Africa from apartheid. But it was Mandela's sacrifice being in prison for 20 something years and being the symbol of the struggle that makes them say Mandela is the founder of modern day South Africa. It is the same thing with Ghana. If you ask Ghanaians who is the founder of Ghana, who gained independence for Ghana, majority of Ghanaians will tell you Osajifu Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. Because it was him who gave that critical spark to the independence struggle that eventually got us independence. The UGCC at the time said independence gradually in the shortest possible time. Nkrumah said independence now. And he fought for it. And that is why Ghanaians recognize him as the founder. Nobody can come and rewrite our history. Indeed, for those of you who don't know it, when the Queen finally agreed to give Ghana independence, the UGCC that Nana Akufado is fighting to be recognized as founders of Ghana wrote a petition. They sent people to England to tell the Queen, don't grant independence, we are not ready yet. And so how can people like that be either, even if we are saying many people fought for independence, you cannot say UGCC was part of it because they were an obstacle to independence. And eventually when the motion of destiny for independence was being passed, these are the same people who walked out of parliament when Nkrumah was moving the motion of destiny. And so today you can't come and rewrite our history. July 1st is our Republic Day. And we also made it our Senior Citizens Day. They've come to take the holiday from July 1st and gone to put it on August 4th, which is the day the UGCC was founded. When we come to office, we'll rectify those things. July 1st will be a holiday again. Ezu, Ezra, if you say who is the founder of Ghana's Fourth Republic, it's obvious, it's J.J. Rawlings. Because it was he who led us from military rule back into constitutional rule that created the Fourth Republic in which we are. But there were many people who worked on it. Justice D.F. Annan was head of National Commission for Democracy. They went round the country and solicited views about what form of government Ghanaians want. But we're not going to say Rawlings, Justice Annan, and who and who are all founders of the Fourth Republic. There's only one, we in the NDC recognize only one founder of the Fourth Republic of Ghana, and that is Jerry John Rawlings.
Nana Akufado is not right when he says there can't be only one founder. Yes, there can be one founder. But let's put that aside. Let's talk about ourselves. They don't like to hear what they said in the past. One of their communicators said when they hear a playback of the videos of what they said, they feel distressed. But we shall stop reminding them of what they said. We shall continue to remind them. When they were saying they have the best economic management team, it says, economic management team, Honorable Osafo Mafo. Honorable Alan Chiramanting. Ken Oforiata. I mean, I said, what a solid team. Today, we are being told that that team of which the current vice president is the head. Not that he was the head. He is still the head of the economic management team. Today, that solid team has landed Ghana in the highest debt that we've ever seen in history. 750 billion Ghana cities. All of us owe. And you think that Nana Kufado is the one going to pay it? No, he's 80 something years. If God grants him some years, he still won't live long enough to pay 750 billion cities. Who's going to pay 750 billion cities? It's you, the youth of this country. It's you. And so they pile the debt, they've spent the money, and they've left the debt for you to come and pay. And the same people said, Ghana near here, my Ghana near here, my yet is a castle, and so I come there. As you as a the same people who said yet is a castle, and so I come there. Today we are hungrier than 2016 when they made those comments. And you remember the other one? Mahama is an incompetent president. Incompetent, incompetent, incompetent. And I warned them. I said, hey, you've never been president before. You don't know what it is to lead a nation. And so be careful what you say. Today, I'm sure they've learned their lesson. Because God, by his grace, gave the power to them. I said, NDC, go and sit aside and let them also handle the country. Today, unemployment, which used to be just above 8% under NDC, it's almost 15% under this present administration. And that's why a lot of our young people are here today. They finish school. They have no work to do. I remember when the fundamentals are weak, the exchange rate will expose you. Today, the exchange rate has exposed you. At the time you were saying, when the fundamentals are weak, the exchange rate will expose you. The CD was less than four CDs to one dollar. And you said it had exposed us. Today, the CD is almost 16 CDs to one dollar. And yet you say, oh no, you shouldn't say the fundamentals are weak because the CD is 16. The economy is in crisis. He says, we want to give the money directly to the constituencies because we don't want the people in Accra to chop it. So we're going to give you $1 million per constituency per year. You remember? Today, where is the $1 million per constituency per year? It's eight years now. Boga East, you should have got $8 million by now. All these your roads you are complaining about. If you had $8 million, all these roads will be quota everywhere. Even to the Chiefs Palace, Gambigo Nabas house, there would have been quota there. 
if we had $8 million in Borga East. We're going to build one village, one dam. Every village will have a dam. Even those who got the dams, they are like uh, duck ponds. You can't do any dry season gardening there. If 10 cows drink from that dam every day, in the Hamatan, dry season, within two months, that water will be finished. Ezu, we're going to provide every district with a factory. One district, one factory. One district, one factory. Boga is where's your factory? Where's your factory? Ezu, you see, every day we will remind them of what they said. Because you cannot take the people for a ride. They did it and got away with it in 2016. And they are going to come and lie to you again. Now the new one is that we will come and give all of you smartphones and you pay one CD, two CDs, one CD, two CDs. Ezu, Eza, and I'm saying that the youth of Borga East do not need your smartphone. They need a job. If the young people get a job, they can buy their own smartphone. If the young people get a job, they can buy their own smartphone. And that is why NDC's priority when we come to office in 2025 is about jobs, jobs, and jobs. And that is why we are advocating the 24-hour economy. When I was doing the building garden at all, I promised Gambigo Naba and all the chiefs here that one of our priorities when we come back will be to revive Kwame Nkrumah's Zwarungu Meat Factory. And when we revive the meat factory, it will do what? It will work 24 hours a day so that all our youth here can get work to do. Some will go to work in the morning, close in the evening, others will come and continue working so that we can employ more people. And so it is about employment, it is about jobs. Because we are sitting on a tinder box. I'm sure you hear what happens in other countries. As I'm speaking, in Nigeria, the young people in Nigeria are on the streets demonstrating. You heard about Kenya. Kenyan youth are demonstrating because opportunities are not opening up for them. And the situation in Ghana is worse because in Ghana, it is not the MPP. It is a small family that has captured everything. And so I can tell you, there are many of my friends in MPP who come and tell me, he says, NDC, you have to do well and get our party out of power. These are MPP people because the MPP has been captured by a small group of people. This is not Kufo's MPP. This is a different MPP that has been hijacked by some people. And so the Democrats and others in MPP actually want their party to lose so that they can go back into opposition and go and reorganize. And so this election is not about NDC and MPP. It is about the people of Ghana versus MPP. Ghanaians want to rescue their, their, their country from that family and friends government. Opportunities of this country must be open to every citizen, no matter your ethnicity, no matter your political affiliation, 
no matter your religious affiliation, because all of us are first and foremost Ghanaians. All the young people here, you deserve opportunity. We are going to stop that secret recruitment into the security services. They come and pick one, two, three, four people and quietly go and put them there. No advertisement. When we come, we are going to come region by region and recruit so that all our young people also have the opportunity to join the security services. And because of the 24-hour economy, we need more policemen. We need more soldiers. We need more customs officers. We need more immigration. We need more prisons. We need more fire service. Because if you can, you must implement 24-hour economy. It must be done in an atmosphere of safety and security. Today, these policemen here, each one of them is in charge of almost 1,000 Ghanaians. Meanwhile, the UN says that the optimal number of police to population ratio should be one policeman to 450 citizens. We are almost, we are more than double. Almost 1,000 to one police officer. So it means that we need to recruit more than another 20,000 police officers because currently our police service, there are only 30,000 of them. And so if we are doing recruitment, all of you must get an opportunity to be able to join the security services. As a, as a, they said they have restored nursing training allowances. And what they haven't told the nurses, or what they refuse to tell Ghanaians, is that they owe the nurses about 30 months of arrears. And so, so when a small nursing trainee girl in Techiman goes and asks a question, he says, I came into nursing training three years ago. I'm in third and final year. I've never seen nursing training allowance. Then he says, oh, I didn't know. So finance minister released some money. And they go and pay them three months. Meanwhile, you owe them almost 30 months. For three years, she has been in school. She's not got allowance. So one of those who are finished, are they going to come back for their trainee allowances? You see, this government is only full of propaganda and deceit. And they say, when a snake bites you, when you see a worm, what do you do? You run away. And another one, they say, a fool's something they don't step on it twice you can only step once if you try to step again he will resist you they've deceived us once before they've deceived us twice will we allow them to deceive us again the third time and so 7 december is our opportunity to make a change we do not make promises ndc but when we come, we do the kinds of things that will better the lives of all our people. What is different between the two parties is NDC will come and build schools, build chips compounds, health facilities, provide drinking water, extend electricity, do the roads and all that. So that we will benefit, our children will benefit, our grandchildren will benefit. But what does MPP do? They come they will take one, two, or three out of you, add them to the family and friends, they will make money, and then they will come and be distributing that money to you, and be distributing the money to you. That money, you will spend it. And after you spend it, you will remain in your poverty. So, the advice I give is, as we are going to elections, they will come with money, 500 cities, 1,000 cities, 200 cities, like they did in Asin North. And the Asin North people said, we will take the money because it is our money. But when we go, we will vote according to where the truth is. And that is why 
That is why they lost the Asin North by election. And so every Ghanaian must learn from the Asin North example. All of us must be Asin North people and must do the Asin North uh, model. When they bring the money, take it because they are returning your money to you. And when you take it, you chop it. But when you go into the booth, vote according to your conscience. There are things that we are introducing. I've explained it. Farmer Service Center. Borga East is going to have one center. You have all the tractors, all the planters, plows, harrows, fertilizer, seeds, weedicides, everything you need for farming. And at the beginning of the farming season, if you are a registered farmer with the center, anything you need, just go to the center, they will come and do it for you. And then when you harvest and you sell your crops, you go and pay the cost of the inputs, and then you sell any profit you get, it is yours, you can do whatever you want with it. They've talked about the Women's Development Bank, and our Queen Mother spoke about it. Our mothers sell granuts, they sell wache, they sell food in the market, they travel to go and sell food in Techiman, they do small businesses, they have hairdressing saloons, dressmakers, and every day, because they can't get capital, they try to do susu, small, small, small. Sometimes the susu collector runs away with their money. And so we want to prevent our mothers and our sisters from suffering that fate. So we are going to bring you your own bank, Women's Development Bank. And so the small, small susu you are doing, you put it in the Women's Development Bank. And when you want a loan, you go there, I want 1,000 CDs, they will give you the loan, and then you pay little by little by little by little, with very little interest on it. We know this is a mining area, and some of our young people are involved in mining. When we come, we're going to come and streamline the mining so that our young people, the community, can also benefit from the gold mining that is taking place. So when we come, those of you who are involved in gold mining will come and streamline things so that you can also benefit. We're also telling the big companies that are mining in our area that they should give priority to our youth in this area before they take anybody from anywhere else. If there is vacancy, they should come and recruit our, our, our young people, train them, and let them work in the gold mines instead of going somewhere else and going to bring people to come and work. So let me thank you all very much. The night is far spent. Our candidate is uh, Honorable Dominic Ayine. He is...